All right, my name is uh, Jonathan Nunez. Um, I did my project on a uh, study of uh, carbon composite technology and its applications in society and how we use them at the University of Florida. So the main topics I'm going to cover are what are carbon composites? We've all heard the terms you know, carbon fiber bantered around a lot, so I'll get into that. Uh, we'll talk a little about the history behind the, uh, the technology and how it applies to society today. And then I'll use a bit of a case study from my experience on the Formula SAE team using carbon composites as um, an example for the advantages and disadvantages of this material. And uh, it's a good reference to the same things that happen in industry. So the experience we have is very similar to at a big engineering company, the same decision tree you have to make. So we'll get into that as well. So a little background, um, carbon fiber. Uh, the form of this fabric here uh, that we use. It's a $13 billion industry growing really rapidly. It's only a couple decades old. And um, yeah, it's becoming more and more consumer products every day. Uh, mainly in the sports, aerospace, <coughs> motorsports industries where uh, high strength to weight ratio is key. Uh, it was originally invented by the British in the 60s, but it was kind of ahead of its time and they, they lost control of it. They tried to keep it all in England, but they, they kind of lost out because they didn't have the technology really perfected. So now it's starting to really take hold in uh, consumer goods. And um, the key properties of carbon composite materials are extremely high tensile strength, and that gives it very high stiffness and a really high strength to weight ratio. And the strength to weight ratio is what really gives it an advantage over other materials like fiberglass, aluminum, wood. Uh, so you can make the same strength of part using a lot less material. Um, but the disadvantages are the cost. So this roll of fabric, if that was regular old fiberglass that we use, it's six to eight dollars a yard. That carbon fiber is 30 to 50 dollars, depending on the weave. And obviously companies can't really see it well here, but they make all different kinds of weaves and patterns, and so you can make uh, really pretty looking structures. Um, the fabric itself. Um, for reference here, this is a carbon filament. It's five to seven uh, micrometers in diameter. That tree trunk next to it is a human hair. Uh, so these filaments are wound into threads and then woven into a fabric. And the fabric is baked at 2,000 degrees C and it becomes almost pure carbon. And the carbon structure behind it is it's basically like graphite, like hexagons. But instead of sh shearing off like pencil lead, it's folded and, and whatnot to make it really strong. But, uh, these are different types of uh, core structures of the carbon, but I won't really get into that. Um, so the fabric itself is cool, but that's not very useful. So to make it useful, you have to make it into a composite. So what carbon fiber is that you all know and love from car hoods or iPhone cases or whatnot is um, an epoxy or another type of resin, a uh, polymer, that the fiber is actually reinforcing. So you can see us doing a layup here on a car part. We um, overlay the, with the fabric and soak it in resin, and when it cures using high temperature and high pressure, it turns into this composite. So you can make a sandwich like this that's actually a lot stiffer because you make it really thick, and now you can use that tensile strength to make a really stiff structure. So um, there's a bunch of other materials you can make out of the carbon fiber. You can make solid carbon, a bunch of different things. So obviously it's very expensive. So we'll get into it. Um, so as I said, to cure this stuff, to make it something useful, you have to bake it at high temperatures to cure the resin and high pressure to get all the air out. So here you see uh, McLaren Motorsports' autoclave. It's about a 10-foot diameter cylinder where they can put an entire car chassis in there and bake it at high temperature and it's sealed off so they can pressurize it. We have a similar setup using a heat lamp and a plastic bag, <laughs> but the, the end goal is the same. Um, recreation, so as you see, um, the declining manufacturing costs of carbon fiber allow it to make its way into the consumer market for everything. So all the types of sports goods and uh, toys and doodads and things um, because it's obviously very light and very strong. So if you had a tennis racket that was really heavy versus one made of carbon fiber that you can swing a lot faster, and for a professional that has unlimited amounts of money, they're going to get the carbon fiber one. 